Before we talk about The Mandalorian, a huge announcement for Star Wars Visions Volume 2. The new season, featuring nine animated shorts, drops on May the 4th, Star Wars Day, each episode by a studio from around the globe, Cartoon Saloon, Punk Robot, Triggerfish, 88, and more. I'm very excited to cover it, but now, onto The Mandalorian. Hello my dear friends and welcome back to another video. So yesterday was a pretty big day because we got the Bad Batch Season 2 Episode 6 but it also marked one month until The Mandalorian Season 3 and the official social media accounts of Star Wars and Disney Plus really started pushing the show and I do think in the next couple of weeks we're gonna start seeing some TV spots as well as some more promotionals. Well it's kind of started already because yesterday we got exclusive posters as well as some new images and the official Star Wars YouTube accounts posted a retrospective called For phenomenon behind the scenes on the first two seasons. Well today, we're gonna look at some of these new images, as well as a fan theory of what the Mandalorian could lead to. As you can see, they went with the green aesthetic of the Mandalorian Season 3. Each season has a distinct colour scheme, the posters for Season 2 were blue, Season 1 was a sunset orange, and Season 3 is this yellowish green. I really love it. We have Mando with the Darksaber, the remnants of Mandalore in the background, and Grogu in the N1 Starfighter. Of all the posters we've had so far, I would say this is the most epic. Next up, we have a really awesome poster of the four main Mandos, Din Djarin, Bo-Katan, the Armor and Paz Vizsla. All four of these Mandos are going to be allies by the end of Season 3, the Tribe and the Night Owls. Another one of Bo and Din. And this is my favourite, Grief Karga in his new red robes, holding Grogu on Navarro. Katie Sarkov responded to the main poster, again teasing her character Bo-Katan is after the Darksaber, and we will be speaking about her more later in the video. Carl Weathers was another one who shared his excitement, and I reckon over the next month or so, we're gonna see more and more cast members tease what's coming on March 1st. I really can't wait for season 3 guys, fingers crossed we do get some more footage in TV spots later in the month. And speaking of Mando, the idea of a Mandalorian video game has been very popular for a long time. Many Star Wars fans would definitely want one. But how about this as a suggestion, the purge of Mandalore being turned into a video game? It's a deeply important but very underrepresented aspect of Star Wars lore, and it's an event that would be perfect for its own game. One of the most attractive elements about the Star Wars franchise concerns the massive scope of stories, the world building, the plethora of planets, and the timeline being so expansive. And in the case of the Mandalorian and Mandalorian history, there is so much narrative potential there. One of the most pertinent and contemporary relevant aspects of Star Wars lore, especially going into season 3, is the Purge of Mandalore. We saw a flashback to it in the book of Boba Fett, and many fans at the time thought it should be expanded even more. Maybe more flashbacks in Season 3, maybe its own show, if we do get another Mandalorian spin-off. But what about a video game, one that connects to a very dark aspect of Mandalorian history? And it was one of the most expansive geopolitical events to ever occur in the early days of the Empire. Now, as we saw in the Book of Boba Fett, the armor blames Bo-Katan and Clan Kreese generally, but Bo-Katan lost the Darksaber to Moff Gideon during this period of time, one we haven't seen on screen. At the end of the Mandalorian in Season 1, we see Moff Gideon wielding the Darksaber. In Season 2, Din Djarin wins the Darksaber off of him. She was given it by Sabine Wren, she didn't win it in combat, and now it haunts her because she lost it to Moff Gideon before the events of The Mandalorian Season 1, and those unexplored years leading up to it could be told through a narrative in a Mandalorian video game, one based on the Purge, and all the events surrounding it, the tragedies, the Night of a Thousand Tears, and so on. In Season 3, we see Sundari, the capital destroyed, but prior to the Purge, years ago, Mandalore was a powerful and imposing planet, largely due to warrior culture of the Mandalorian people and the intense value of the planet's unique resources. The warrior caste of the Mandalorian people was plentiful and could be deeply religious to a fanatical degree, as we see in the tribe. As we know not only from the Clone Wars and Rebels, Mandalorian history is expansive and very complex. Given the tensions between Mandalore and its enclave groups against the Empire, a decision was made to completely purge the planet via bombing raids and a near total genocide of the Mandalorian people. Now the tragedy surrounding Mandalore has long been a focal point for wider Star Wars fan discussion. It just fascinates us what Bo-Katan was like when she got that Darksaber, because when she failed to fend off the Imperials, the other clans blamed her. 
The survivors of the purge went to nearby planets and moons, like Concordia, but so many died, the Night of a Thousand Tears, the mines of Mandalore were destroyed, along with its big cities, but there is clearly something left there, and when we go to Mandalore in Season 3, we can see what's been going on there. Now the reason I say this is that I did have a theory that Imperial Remnants could be using Mandalore as a hideout, it's the perfect hiding spot from the New Republic. Is Din Djarin in for a surprise when he and Grogu go there? And what is Bo-Katan up to? We know she's got a plan, but what is it? We do see her in the trailer on a throne, and at least for the first half of the season, she is going to be an antagonist. In my opinion guys, one of the main reasons she wants the Darksaber and to rule Mandalore is to make things right. She wants to prove herself as a leader, that much is clear and I think she will. So the idea of a Mandalorian game where the purge takes place and maybe after a storm Mandalore would be a great idea. Now the other day I also spoke about a big challenge Din Djarin faces, atoning for his sins, enforces a return to orthodoxy, acknowledging he was wrong. I don't think he's going to go through with it, eventually he's either going to split from the tribe or convince them he can be a true Mando without concealing his face all the time. I talked about that in this video. But with the clans trying to unite and agree upon common goals to restore their planet and heritage, there is another hurdle. The Armour and her tribe believe the planet of Mandalore is cursed. They fear that anyone who travelled there would be killed, so this is more proof that Season 3 is about overcoming challenges for all of our Mandalorian characters, not just Din, not just the Armour, but Bo-Katan and new ones as well. They all have to face personal challenges based on previous beliefs and biases, and decide if it's better for their people to set aside their differences in opinion and work together for the greater good for their people to restore their creed, culture and heritage. After the events of the Purge of course, Mandalore was no longer ruled by the Mandalorians. As we saw in Season 2 Chapter 11, Bo-Katan planned to steal weapons from an Imperial Remnant to retake the homeworld, but in Season 3, her plans are going to be different. As I've put forward in the past, I think she's working with Clan Wren, more specifically Ursa Wren on Crown Nest. I think she's gathering allies, weaponry and resources so that they can take on the Imperial Remnant remnant. And so now my dear friends, could Nick Offerman come to Star Wars? This is from Fandom Wire. The Infinity Baby star's performance in The Last of Us has not just impressed critics and fans, but also caught the attention of Lucasfilm and Star Wars writer Charles Saul, who responded to a fan cast on Twitter. After his marvellous performance in the HBO show, Offerman has been trending on the internet for a while, enjoying fan applause, but in particular, a fan shared his wish to see Offerman enter the Star Wars universe with a character named Porter Engel. Porter Engel has not yet appeared in a Star Wars live-action show. He might just be a side character who appears as a chef at the beginning of a comic line, but the character enjoys a rich history and background. Engel is surely one of the characters who possesses a huge possibility to be explored in the Acolyte or upcoming Star Wars movies that do take place during the High Republic era. Charles Saul's unexpected response on a fan casting has excited many High Republic fans who raised their hopes to see Nick Offerman make his Star Wars debut at some stage in the future. 